Hey guys, what's going on? Sincere here with whoissincere.com, Anon Radio Live, and the All Rights Matter Show. Make sure you check out the All Rights Matter Show below. Download the app in the description section. Listen, I, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about uh, some things that have been on my heart uh, regarding all of the law enforcement overreaching in our corrupt political system that we're in right now. And I'm just going to talk here briefly about what I see. I haven't seen anybody place out this information I'm about to give you. Um, okay, as you know, I've been covering uh, Trump for a while. I have a buddy of mine. His name is NJ Weedman. He's been covering Christie for <laughs> for over a decade. Um, in putting all these things together with the state of New Jersey, I've come up with a very interesting conclusion. What we're watching right now is exactly what I put out in a video about six to seven months ago. And I stated, I said, Trump is Obama 2016. And I'm going to tell you why. Uh, a couple years ago, maybe a few years ago, I'll put the video up here on my YouTube. Uh, Trump visited New Jersey. I believe it was after one of the storms. And in, in talking, you know how uh, uh, the governor will come out with the president. They'll make a statement together. Well, in talking, uh, the president gave Chris Christie what I considered at the time to be the biggest endorsement that I've ever seen him give any other candidate um, for their work. And to me, in my mind, when he first initially made that statement, I... I um, it, I thought that, you know, Christie might be on hit on the road to the White House, um, which he did run for president. And as you know, he dropped out and now supports Trump. So the statement that uh, Obama made was that the state of New Jersey, um, I'm just paraphrasing here, that Christie has done a good job with the state of New Jersey and that the state of New Jersey um, should be a model for the country and how the country should move forward. When I heard that, I was living in New Jersey. I currently reside in Chattanooga, uh, Tennessee, um, just to get away from New Jersey. When I first initially heard that, it, it made my jaw drop. Now, you know, POTUS says a lot of things that are unbelievable, and he does a lot of things that are completely unbelievable. But that one took the cake for me because we're talking about a Democrat giving a Republican one of the largest endorsements that I've heard, you know, from a sitting Democratic president. Um, it, it let me know that there was something slick going on. There was something underhanded about to happen. Now, fast forward uh, to now, to present day and time, March 2016. Uh, Chris Christie has done his campaign. He has now... Uh, you know, bowed out of the presidential race and has instead uh, put his support underneath Donald Trump. After bad mouthing him, after talking plenty of trash about him, I understand that this is politics. But when you say that somebody can't be president, uh, and you're you're you know, you're consistent about saying that it, while you're on that campaign, you know, trail, and they have plenty of clips of you saying that. Well. That says something when you turn around and wake up the next morning and say, I'm endorsing this person for president. It's silliness. It's foolishness. But this is the kind of trickery and deception and uh, opportunism that these people practice. They don't care about you and I. They don't care about policies, procedures. They care about upholding their own egos, upholding their own standards and uh, getting a paycheck at the end of the day. So what are we looking at? Obama gives Christie uh, a great endorsement. Christie endorses Trump. Trump, in turn, now this hasn't happened yet, but just seeing how Trump, how well Trump did in Super Tuesday, and when you saw it, when he was giving his speech after Super Tuesday was over that night, um, you know the the speech. Chris Christie was standing right behind him, so. There's not really a reason for that because Christie has already given his endorsement just like Palin has. He didn't have to be there at, you know, at this Super Tuesday event standing directly behind Trump. This is my guess, guys. Trump already has picked his vice president. His vice president is going to be Chris Christie. Okay? 
That's why that that um, endorsement from Chris Christie in Trump's words was his most important endorsement. That's Trump's words. Now, this is what I've been watching unfold. So I'm just giving it to you how I see it. OK, and this is what I mean by Trump is a fraud, that this is a scandal, that this is a scam. So what Trump is doing is he's going to, in my opinion, he's going to go ahead and pick Christie to run with him uh, for, you know, vice president. Um, he's going to do exactly the same thing that Obama did. Now, people say, oh, well, he's saying this, he's saying that he's not going to do the same thing. Listen, politicians have been saying things for years. Don't let Donald tell you he's not a politician. If you if you lay in bed with them, you eat with them, sleep with them, whatever, go with them, fund them. You're a politician. You're in the political arena. Maybe not the sense of an elected politician, but you're in the political arena. Now, what we do know about Donald Trump is he has supported liberal policies and he is not a true conservative. OK, um, this is a fact, guys. This is not something that, you know, it, I'm making up or it's not something that you can't go find on your own. This man, this is what he does. OK, you know, he, he says one thing and he does another. Um, we're talking about, uh, you know, abortion issues, um, immigration issues, health care issues, you name it. Donald Trump has always been with the liberals. You name it, and he has always been with the liberals until he decided, uh, you know, to run as a Republican. He's been a Republican before. Let me clarify that now for those who may say, oh, well, he was a Republican before. Yeah, he was a Republican before, but his uh, policies and also his funding uh, shows that, you know, he's been supporting liberal policies for uh, many decades now. So you have... This new movement that is happening within the GOP that I, I'm trying to hint it to you guys. I'm trying to show you and tell you this movement that's happening in the GOP is only for one reason. They are the last standing party with anybody righteous left in it. Everybody that's in the left, they're corrupt. They're gone. Let go of them. You, you know, we're not going to get them back. OK, just just be honest with you. Now, everybody that's in the right, they are being forced to start choosing sides and not just choosing normal conservative sides where uh, they can uphold the traditional values of their party system. But no, these new radical ideas and beliefs that mimic liberal, you know, far left liberal ideas and beliefs. So what you have is a bunch of liberal uh, conservatives running around. I mean, I'm talking far right liberal conservatives, a whole different class of uh, people running. Who fits into that class? Trump and Christie. Christie is a Republican. He runs his state just like a liberal, just like a Democrat. OK, the same way that Trump would run the United States. Now you're starting to follow me. So when Obama gave that endorsement to Christie and now looking, you know, uh, using hindsight and looking back, this is a direct path. It's a direct path. Trump and Christie have been good friends for a very long time. OK, now I know you guys don't know this, um, you know, because you're not in New Jersey, those who aren't listening to it, but. On 101.5 in uh, New Jersey, um, I believe it's North Jersey, uh, you know, on the radio station there, Chris Christie goes in. I'm not sure how often, maybe once a month, twice a month. I don't know. But he goes into that radio station in particular and he has an air, you know, uh, a, a segment called uh, speak with the governor or talk to the governor, something like that. In the segment, he supposedly takes calls through the air and, and you know, answers questions. Uh, as I was listening uh, just a few days ago. He, he really pre-screens, they pre-screen all the questions for him. I called in about 80 something times and didn't get through, but I listened to him say on the radio, oh, when I read that question before. So that let me know that the caller that was calling in the question, he already knew what it was. Okay. When Christie was on, and I'm telling you guys what's about to happen because it hasn't happened yet, but it'll be in the news within the next, I don't know, very shortly. 
So when Christy was on 101.5, follow me now. They, uh, a caller called in and they started talking about Atlantic City, I believe it was. Um, what did they say? Uh, I can't remember exactly what it was about Atlantic City. But they started talking about Atlantic City. Now, this is the big deal. Atlantic City is about to run out of money in one month. This is a huge deal. This is large. Atlantic City, the little Vegas of the East Coast, is going to run out of money and be broke in one month. None of the outlets are talking about it, but Christie talked about it on air. Now, the, pl the plan from the Atlantic City uh, government, from the local government there, uh, supposedly Christie was saying they had some kind of agreement or a deal where Christie would come in, he would take full control of Atlantic City, all its assets, all its resources, and he would solely be responsible for deciding the direction that Atlantic City would go in. And if they're not willing to adhere to those terms, Christie has stated that he will not uh, fight with one hand behind his back and he will not help out and he will not allow the taxpayers to bail out Atlantic City if they make him fight with one hand behind his back. So what he's using is strong arm politics to take over a city, which is a completely unconstitutional move. That's what we're watching. Now, all of this is going under the radar of the mainstream media. So you're talking about Atlantic City about to be broke. Christie using Starmar and tactic politics to say, I, on, I will only dedicate the resources of the state to help you out if you allow me to do everything that I want to do and not tie not one of my fingers together or arm behind my back. Okay? Now, what's so interesting about that whole situation is Donald Trump owns a good chunk of Atlantic City, okay? He has for some decades now. That is Donald Trump's stumping ground right there, all right? So when you talk about corruption, listen to everything that I just said. Obama gives an endorsement to Christie, okay? Donald, he, his big endorsement that he wanted and, and uh, supporter that he wanted out of his mouth was from Christie. He said he can't even tell you how important it is, and he wanted it more than anything. Okay, that's out of Donald's mouth. So you got Obama endorsing Christie. You got Donald endorsing Christie. You have Christie now hanging out with Donald on the campaign trail. Um, and you have Atlantic City, where Donald has business at, going broke. Okay? I've been saying this for months now, and I said... If you want an idea of how this country is going to be ran by Donald Trump, look at Atlantic City. Look at the missed opportunity of Atlantic City. Decades that man has been there. He could have turned Atlantic City into his playground. Okay? He could have turned it into his playground but still made it enjoyable for the families that are there. He has the most money out of anybody in Atlantic City. And probably the most property too. So with that being said, um, if you want an idea of, of a man that how a man views what's outside of his own property, directly outside of his own property, you would have to look at Trump's holdings within Atlantic City. If you look outside of Trump's properties, it is trash. Trump's properties are kind of trash, too, in Atlantic City, to be honest with you. But if you look outside the properties, trash. OK, I'm talking about wherever you go. There's no jobs. There's no real community environment there. There's no revitalization effort because there's no community focus. Um, it, it's losing money every day. Uh, it, it's not, you know, the tourism this year is probably going to be horrendous. So we're talking about an area of great despair. We're talking about you talk to most people that live in Atlantic City and they don't work in the casino. They're not feeling blessed. They're not feeling like they're in the best environment. Okay? So, you put all of that into a big old bowl. A big old bowl called corruption. And take a good look at it. And think about it. This is what we're up against. You got Obama supporting Christie. I'll go over it again. Obama supporting Christie. Donald coveting Christie's approval. Uh, and, and, and you know his, uh, you know his his, his nomination for uh, for president, and then Christie going with Donald on the campaign trail. 
then the corruption going on in Atlantic City with Atlantic City about to go broke within a month. Now, what do you think is going to happen once this hits the mainstream media in a big way um, about Atlantic City's financial woes that they're in right now? What's going to end up happening is this. Donald Trump and Chris Christie get to come to the rescue and look like they're doing something and working together with cohesion to bring the city out of the slums, to bring the good parts of the city up, or to bring the whole city up. I don't know how they're going to do it, but I I'm telling you, this is the savior complex, okay? Uh, literally, Trump has to save something now. If he saves something now, or if Christie saves something, quote unquote, saves something now, then that gives them that much credibility during uh, this election season. That's what we're up against, guys. That's literally what we're up against. So I don't want you to be upset when you see either Hillary or you see Trump walking across that stage, you know, come here in uh, this year coming up for election season. OK, you, you, you can't be upset about it because you're being told ahead of time. Now, this is what I propose, because I'm tired of the BS. If you look at the state of New Jersey um, and let me give a shout out right now. Uh, justice for Philip White, still an open case. Um, March 31st will be a year that they haven't closed the case in South Jersey. They will not give uh, Philip White's uh, mother any kind of uh you know, any kind of closure on that justice for Quadir Felton shot and blinded by Jersey City police officer Thomas McVicker, who has been a, a radical rebel on the police force for many, many years. And they covered up Quadir Felton's uh, being shot in the head and, and uh, falsely imprisoned for 16 years. That's what his he's in prison right now. And he's alive. They shot and blinded him. He's alive. But he's in prison for the next 16 years, and they covered covered it under a federal operation, Operation Wetlands. I did an, an, uh, a video of it on YouTube. Check it out. Okay? So shout out to Justice for Philip White. That's my friend that was killed by the Vinyl uh, City police officers. And also for Quadir Felton, Justice for Quadir Felton, who was currently locked up. Uh, by Jersey City police officer Thomas McVicker after being uh, shot in the head uh, and blinded while Thomas McVicker was off duty in his personal vehicle. Now, we're looking at mass corruption go on all over the place. Even if we talk about the case of, um, oh boy, uh, there's a, a young lady, I believe her name is Alyssa can't remember her last name right now. I believe it may be Alyssa Allen. I, I may have that last name wrong, but she's also another person out of South Jersey from the area where I'm from. She was found in a, uh, in a jail cell dead. Also, uh, Jeremy Reed shot to death by Bridgeton City uh, police officers, which is 10 minutes from, you know, 10 minutes from Vineland, where my friend Philip Watt was killed. So we see all of this police corruption going on in New Jersey, and they have done a great job at stifling the national attention and on that issue. Also, we see in New Jersey, the Supreme Court just ruled at the end of last year that they don't need warrants to search your car anymore. Pull you over. All they need is probable cause. We know what probable cause is, guys. We're not stupid. Probable cause to a police officer, rogue police officer, says, you're looking at me wrong, boy. Get out the car. I'm going to search your vehicle. So that's what we're looking at. Lawlessness in the land. Now, Jersey was one of the first 13 states to help us get our rights. So isn't it quite ironic that it's one of the first 13 states that's helping to strip away every right? Pretty soon in New Jersey, they will be able to walk into your house and do a warrantless search. I'm telling everybody that I know in New Jersey right now, get out. Get out out of New Jersey. Boycott New Jersey. Get out while you can. I got out a year and a half ago and I told everybody then I said it's going to get worse. I already had a dream. I already knew what was coming. I already saw what was coming towards New Jersey. And plus, I felt it in my own personal life. Get out of New Jersey. That's the purpose of this video to show you that I'm watching everything that's going on. You got to get out, people. Boycott Jersey. Stay alert. Stay alive.